Today on the ONS podcast, we have my good friend, Chase Petty. You've seen him all over our Instagram. He's one of our main models, but you're going to learn a lot more about this wonderful, amazing human being. And he's one of my best friends, and I hope you enjoy this episode. So I've mentioned you in like two out of the last three podcasts <laughs> that Ooh. we've done. <laughs> That's uh, special. And, uh, you know, basically it's centered around um, like happiness. You know, you're, you, you and I have been friends for years now. Like it's, I think it's been like five or six years. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've, we've leaned on each other a lot in business and just like understanding, like you, I value your opinion above a lot of other people's opinion when it comes to business, just because I know you've been in this game for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know anybody that works harder than you do. And basically what I've been talking about is like, I've seen him go through so many other like business ideas and, and, and pour his heart and soul into it. Yeah. And then adventure, adventure for all started. And yeah. I'm just like, man, it like, it brings tears to my eyes a little bit. <laughs> Me too. <man>. Uh, <laughs> Me but too. It, it, I just, I've never seen you more happy, yeah. more fulfilled in business and entrepreneurship than I've seen you in the last two years with adventure for all and GTFO. Yeah, man. It's, um, well, first let me say thank you. You know, <laughs> that's a just really nice thing to say. I appreciate that. And, you know, I feel the same way, man. You know, we vibe off each other really well. I think we value each other's opinions really well. So just in a friendship basis too, it's just nice to have people like that in your life. Cause I feel like, you know, that's one of the reasons for my fulfillment and success with adventure for all is having, you know, people like you in my life and to be able to support those things because you, know, you come up with big ideas, man, it's, it's exciting, but it's scary. Yeah. You know, it's very scary. And so to have those people in your life that are like, no, I mean, you got this. You know, I believe in you. You know, even though, like, I mean, like, you won't even know what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, I got no idea. And you're like, I believe in you. Do it. Yeah, I'm just exactly. Like, All right. <laughs> right or so, die. Yeah, so those, those are, like, the best people in your life. You know, so find those people that just, before they even ask questions, they're like, yeah, you're, you're going to do it. Um, it's just the best energy to have. But, yeah, with the Venture for All, you know, I'll kind of explain it to the, to the audience is, so our organization is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we help kids with exceptionalities. It's what we say, but also known as disabilities. Um, to just thrive in life, man. So we're expanding these like challenging, adventurous opportunities for them to kind of find this deeper part of themselves, like that confidence, that self-belief, that drive, all of those things. So, you know, we're helping these kids take on hiking or riding a bike or kayaking and all these, you know, amazing things outdoors. But through that process, they grow a lot, mm -hmm. you know, as we all do through challenges. So I think it's just been so fulfilling to me because... <sighs> watching being a part of somebody's process for one is one of my favorite things i like to be like connect with people so being able to work with people in person but watching these kids go through this process of not knowing where their place is yet in life and what they stand for and if they can believe in themselves because a lot of these kids with exceptionalities you know like they're getting around that age around 15 where they kind of notice that maybe society doesn't believe in them or maybe you know holds them back a little bit and so you know, just like any human, you start to feel that, you start to read that. And so that's why it's around this age, we like to implement them into these programs where myself and our coaches are just like, just filling them with belief. Like you can do anything, you can do anything. And we teach them that failure is an amazing piece of life and to be grateful for it, you know, cause they fail a lot in the process of learning how to ride a bike. Yeah. Uh. You know, one girl, Sophia this year, you know, she had bruises all down her leg from falling <laughs> and the pedal hitting her shin and, and uh, before that process, her mom was like, you know, she, she would sub a toe and she'd be out for two days, you right. know, like she just didn't have that understanding of like pain tolerance and like that's part of the process. And so, yeah, I'm kind of rambling here, but it's no, just... I mean, like, so most of the kids that you do work with, um, they, they are, they are uh, kids that have like autism, yeah, autism, you know? Down syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, very intense ADHD. Right. Um, but yeah, the last two years since we launched, it's been mainly autism and down syndrome for now. But, um, well, and I know you've mentioned in the past, like one of the things that you, that drove you was like, uh, these kids are, are kind of coddled yeah. because of, of, you know, their autism or, or whatever it may be. And I, I, I appreciate that you, you call it ex exceptionalities because there's some like really amazing things about these kids, yeah. you know, and, um, but they they have been coddled. They've been yep. like because it's just I think it's yeah. just part of the culture. Like they they're coddled. Their their hands are held for mm -hmm. for a while, and um, you're just like no, we're we're not going to do that. Yeah. Like we're going to push them. 
I mean, because again, you know, as an entrepreneur and just in, you know, even before this, just within business, you understand that like you only learn through challenges. Like you only, like your biggest lessons in life come through being challenged. They just do. You know, if life's too easy, you're just not going to grow. You know, you're not going to be able to be reflect. You're not going to be intrinsic. You're not going to be able to do these things because there's nothing causing friction in your life. So, you know, looking at these kids' lives, you know, naturally for a parent, they want to coddle their kid anyways, right? Yeah. They don't want to see their kid fail. Like they want to try to protect them from those things. And then you add in the societal barriers of we're going to put them in one classroom and not let them talk to other kids. So then they're not really, they don't really deal with a lot of bullying or they don't deal with awkward conversations or all these things that you kind of miss out on that much as we don't like them when they're happening as we grow up, they teach us things. Yeah. And so they kind of miss out on those opportunities to learn some of those things. And so we're just trying to get ahead of it, you know, before they graduate high school, um, just so that they have the tools to be able to live a life of purpose beyond school and find a job and live more intentional purpose day to day. Yeah. So. What was the inspiration? Like what, what got you going I, i'm trying yeah. to remember like yeah. i just i can't remember like what was the inspiration for starting adventure for all and like this I, crazy idea of taking these kids on yeah. adventures or like hiking in the mountain bike mountain biking yeah. ki kayaking all this stuff oh, man i mean it's a great question there's probably a few you know variables within inspiration you know one being danielle williams which is my my girlfriend she's um and and my partner she's an amazing inspiration for me you know she's been in this field her whole life you know she had family members um she went to school for it and now she has her own business that she's had for 10 years you know training kids with exceptionality so she was a big inspiration because i volunteered with a lot a lot with her and doing volunteering with her business but um a deeper inspiration for the adventure side of things was i personally just love the outdoors and adventure you know um i before I got into this, I was trained adventure athletes. So I trained mountain climbers, mountain bikers, and I love just the psychology of things like diving into people's minds because people that are in that field of mountain biking, mountain climbing, all those things, if they want to be the best, it's not a matter of physical anymore. It's a matter of mental. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to be that 1% or you want to be the best at something, we both know it comes from in between the ears. Right. And so really understanding those individuals and trying to help them find that best self within, within here. And being able to implement that with these kids with exceptionalities has been exceptional. You know, mm -hmm. like to give you an example, like we make them before anything that they're challenging with or that they've never done, we make them repeat a phrase. And they all kind of pick their own phrase. So like one kid's phrase is, I got this. So before he would do anything, we would say, what do you say? And he'd make him say it out loud. He said, I got this. Because, and I always tell people, you have to say it out loud because when you say it out loud, your brain then has to hear it and right. then has to process it. So you are, it is way more valuable to say it out loud than it is to yourself. And so, you know, we have a video of Joey <laughs> first time going on a descent down a big dirt trail. And I could tell he was like, oh man, this looks sketchy. <laughs> and um, I'm like, Joey, what do you say? He's like, I got this. I'm like, no, say it like you mean. He's like, I got this. And then sure enough, you know, he goes and he does it. That's awesome. Um, but there's just so much power in those words. And, 100%. Um, and, you know, since, you know, four months of doing that now, you know, he's graduated from this program and he has a bunch of other amazing things that we have planned for him. But his family tells me now at home, you know, they'll, the mom will go to ask to help someone. He's like, no, 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 I got this. Like, I can do it. And so, so it's bleeding into other areas of their life. Yeah. Yeah. Because, again, it's just between the ears. You know, once you kind of create those habitual habits that show them that they can have self-belief, it's just it's going to bleed into other areas of your life. It just has to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just came back from a, an adventure where you took, yeah. I think, was it five kids? Uh, four kids and, and their families. And their families yeah. up, up in uh, Wilmington, New York. You yeah. guys did some hiking. And did you camp? Uh, well, so we do camping like next to the house because it's okay. usually most of their kids is their first time camping. Yeah. So we give them the feel of camping outdoors, but also the safety of like, hey, if you get sketched out, the house is right there, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. this was uh, year two, right? This is year two, yeah. Okay, so this was the big adventure for the year. You can, yep. You've been training these kids all year for yep. all the activities. Um, give me some highlights. Like, what was it? What was it like? Yeah, I mean, highlights of the trip, man. I think um, one of the major highlights is honestly the families, too. You know, okay. because when it starts off again, like a family's trying to learn how to let go, you know, let go to their child's hand and let them fail and put trust in other people. And so when we get on the trip, I think sometimes the families show up, they kind of told us like, you know, they're packing for all these active stuff and they're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be hard. We have to hike a mountain. We have to wake up at 3.30 in the morning one day and hike in the dark and they're kind of nervous. But after a full day of being there, the parents are like, this is beautiful. Yeah. Like, look at my kids. Like they're, they have friends now. They have a community they have these coaches that believe in them and like they're they're hiking mountains they're biking down these trails and like just seeing their kids thrive on a level that 
you know, they've all admitted that they didn't think was possible for their child. And so just seeing that hope and that child be revived in the parents is a lot of fun. I'm the, sure. Because the parents are hiking, yeah, the parents yeah. are jumping off cliffs into the river. <laughs> you know, they're like, they're kids again. Right. And so sharing that energy with them and seeing that energy revived in them is, is always a highlight. Um, highlights for the kids is obviously just, you know, when they're on the trip, now that they're in the environment, you know, they worked four months for this moment. And then seeing them face certain fears that they were still struggling with. So like one girl, for instance, um, Kelly, she's she's pretty afraid of the water. Um, when she was younger, she had cancer. And so, you know, when she was going through um, uh, chemo, chemo, thank you, um, they were told, like, stay out of the water just because the bacteria and stuff like that. So mm. for five years, it was kind of instilled in her. Stay, out, stay away from water. Stay out of the water. Stay out of the water. So it kind of built this internal fear. So the day we had fly fishing you know, you have to go into the river, you know, you're walking into the river, like waist deep. And I was across the river with another athlete at the time. And I saw her across like fishing from the bank. And I was like, Kelly, what are you doing? And she's like, Oh, I'm just fishing from here. Go <laughs> chase. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> so, so I walked across the river, got to the other side and it took us about 20 minutes. You know, we had a little dance party and mm -hmm. we just kind of got her mind and, and, um, she eventually walked into the river. And again, another aspect of that is just being on the spot, being able to help them understand that their fears are only as real as they make them sure so again like making her say out loud what is your biggest fear and she's like well like falling in the water or or like tripping and i was like okay so like that's your biggest fear she was yeah i was like all right say it 10 times so she like yells it 10 times out loud and then we had her use her phrase which is i can i will mm. so then she said i can i will 10 times loud and as she's saying it you know she's holding my hands i'm slowly kind of adding a little bit more tension and she starts to just kind of trust and then you know eventually we're out in the water waist deep and and not only did she do it, but then she stayed out there for two hours fishing. Sure. She yeah, caught three yeah. fish. And so now her experience with water is now a beautiful one. Right. She's with her best friends. She's with these coaches that believe in her mom was there with her crying as she did it. And now she caught this fish. And so now she has this new relationship right. with water. And that's, again, just being able to overcome those moments of feeling paralyzed, again, just bleeds into your life of knowing, like, man, I can overcome anything. Yeah. No, I love the 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 kind of the controlling of the fear kind of yeah. aspect of all of that. Like one of the, one of the things I tell my girls, um, so like, you know, daddy, I'm afraid, you know, mm -hmm. I'll just be yeah. like, that's, that's good. This, yeah. that means is you have an opportunity to be brave, yeah. you know? So like, yep. it's not like this, uh, this idea of being afraid. It's not that people are, that are afraid are not brave. Yeah. They're just able to overcome mm -hmm. that fear. Yeah. Um, you get to be a hero in their story. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's like a million of those stories coming out of that trip. Yeah. And that's and, thing. Like Kelly's just one. You know, right. There's so many. Like there's one more I got to mention. So there's a zip line course there that we take the kids each year and they have rappels. So if you don't know what rappels are, you're basically walking to the end of like a bridge or like a plank and you just jump off. Right. You know, it's not like a zip line. You're just free falling. So, like, for about five feet, you free fall until the cord kind of catches you. So, these kids are walking up. And, again, it goes against everything <laughs> to go, I'm just going to jump off of right. this. And just <laughs> and trust to, this is going to take me. Trust this yeah. is going to catch me. Yeah. And um, just having them all do that. Right. You know, even one of the girls hesitated. She was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. And I was like, you know, had her come back. Same thing. We had our talk. And, boom, you know, she ended up doing it. But it's just, yeah, it's just, I think after the trip, it shows them, you know, that, if they're willing to put in the effort that they can do anything they put their mind to. Yeah. So yeah, there's just tons of those moments on the trip and it's hard to explain them all, but it's the best week of the year, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like Christmas morning for right. seven days straight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you started adventure for all, like, and you had this idea of like, we're going to push these kids into these different scenarios to where it's going to test their limits for sure. Yeah. Did you have any idea? Like this was going to be as successful as it is. I don't think um, I don't think anyone does with yeah. any idea, right? Sure. We have this just deep hope and this just this willingness to just run into the dark, right? <laughs> you know, um, and to be honest, through the process of raising money that first year, as we launched, it became difficult because every foundation I spoke with, they um they didn't donate in the first year because they thought it's going to be too hard. Mm -hmm. Same thing, right? That's that kind of coddling mindset early on of like, ah, oh, like you're going to challenge them too much. It's going to cause them to go backwards and it's going to push them too much and so on and so forth. And so people were hesitant. And so after that first year of, you know, one of our kids being practically nonverbal to 
having full sentences and speaking and now having conversations and after the trip yeah after the trip like going through his process you know he was basically a yes and no that was it and now he's hi my name's riley what's your name you know and oh i like this and now he can just full-on have conversations you know and he has autism and so when i say full-on conversations you know it's it's a couple questions and then yeah. you know we're still working on his communication but still it's better he, than yes he's able no. to yeah. express himself let me put it that way which is and that was even with his family no so with okay. his family yeah okay. he was okay with his mom and dad but okay. anybody else it was just very much kind of just very forward you know but um what she saw the most that did change even at home is just again his ability to express himself like to genuinely say i'm happy or i don't like this or i do want this because that's one of the hardest things for them to do is understand those different emotions mm -hmm. and where those emotions apply okay and so you know again going through the process you know at the beginning of a workshop at the end of a workshop you know danny developed these amazing surveys where you know there's like a sad face or a crying face a sad face a neutral face a happy face an excited face right and it's like we have them check in you know how do mm -hmm. you feel right now you know why do you feel that way you know that's what these words mean these words attach to that face and so again also through the process we're, we're trying to teach them to express because we need to know how they feel you know yeah. so that we can properly coach them and guide them because the whole purpose is for them to progress you know not regress so so yeah, there's there's a lot of elements, a lot of little pieces that a lot of people don't see. You sure, know, people see the the tangible things like they couldn't ride a bike now they can. Mm -hmm. You know they they've never hiked now they're on a mountain peak. You know they're afraid of water but now they're kayaking. You know mm -hmm. there's these beautiful things that I think people see and like that's awesome. But I tell people all the time, all those things are just beautiful distractions to the actual thing we're doing, right. which is just developing these and instilling these amazing traits for them to thrive in life. Yeah. So those are lessons that we can all learn right yeah. like yeah. it's not just with these kids like if mm -hmm. we push ourselves out of our comfort zone like yep. we can accomplish a lot more than yeah. what we think and um having danny like yeah. that as that foundation because she's obviously she's got such a big background and all yeah. of this and her heart yeah. is just like so big yeah. towards these kids so having that foundation like it's not like you just like some random gym bro that came off the yeah. the street and was like yeah i'm gonna start this foundation yeah, like she's yeah. like there's like an actual like technical aspect to it to where yeah, you have so, a solid foundation and i just love that you were able to like find this thing together yeah. and like it was like this perfect partnership yeah. for what you both love and are excited mm -hmm. about because i mean obviously like if you're not passionate about it yeah it's a lot of fucking work like oh, it's so much <laughs> i work, I, I have one of the yeah. few i'm like one of the few people that can kind of see in the behind the scenes of like how yeah. hard you actually work yeah to make this thing a reality yeah and you have that has to be driven by passion like, it has to yeah, yeah. i mean because there's just days as you know you know just any entrepreneur you know you're from sun up to sundown you know you're just crushing things behind the computer and then you get done with the day and you're like did i even do anything yeah that's what you know, it feels like. It's yeah. what it feels like sometimes. But you know, and that's that's where in the in the beauty of my of my work is these kids give me, you know, that energy mm -hmm. to push on those days because, you know, once a week I had to go have a workshop with them and be around them and they just fill me up, you know. And like we said earlier in the beginning of this podcast, you know, having those people in your life that fill you up and that believe in you, you know, these kids looking at looking up to me as a coach just fills me up more than anything. Yeah. And just like gives me so much purpose of like, man, I really just want to be the best I can be and continue to grow myself so I can continue to just lead these lead these kids and help these kids find the best version of themselves. It's gotta bleed over into your life. That just makes oh, sense. Yeah. Like yeah. you're you're giving them all this like all these truths of yeah. like goal setting and, and actually attaining those things and pushing themselves. It, there's no way it doesn't bleed over into your own life. Yeah. Like to keep going. Yeah. Um, I remember you you did a a fundraiser. Um, big event it was mm -hmm. wonderful like you did an awesome job with putting that all together um and the like the week leading up to it you're you hurt your back mm. you know you just like had this like yeah. <laughs> terrible like uh. the back injury from like high school yeah that just flared up yep and i just remember seeing you on like laying on the floor <laughs> in the field where the event was going yeah. and just like pointing like you need to do that over there yeah. like <laughs> can you do this over there <laughs> I, yeah. if you're not passionate about yeah. it <laughs> at that point, because like a I lot of people barely walk at yeah, that point. A I lot remember, of people would have yeah. been like, fuck this. I'm yeah. done. Like, I need to go home. Oh, man. Um, I was dying. But the, it came together <laughs> so wonderfully. Yeah. Like it was a beautiful event and just getting to see, um, you know, 1836 did the 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 film piece for it. Yeah. And um, it was just I've I've told 
uh, so many people about yeah. it and just like i'm just so proud of you guys Thank you. and um but this this film like um it really captured like what you guys were doing on these adventures yeah. and i just remember like Laura and I just sitting at the table, just bawling our eyes out. Um, <laughs> I because think you were the only one. Yeah, no, so. no, no. There wasn't a dry eye in the room. Yeah. Like it was just this beautiful story of just like overcoming adversity and just these kids are doing things that no one in their life thought that they could could do. Like yeah. you had a mom say, like, uh, she, she's not going to be able to ride a bike. Yeah. She's yeah. N- let alone mountain bike. Yep. And by the end of the week, she was riding a bike. Yeah. And down the side of a yeah, mountain. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, that's, and that's the beauty. I always, I always appreciate the families and the parents' like ability to be so raw. Sure. You know, because we had two of the parents when the program started, and they were able to admit it. You know, act, you know, we had some video testimonials this year of, of them, and they admitted it in the testimony. They're like, I remember coming to you and telling you, like, hey, my child's not going to be able to ride a bike, but I really appreciate you like including them. But I just want you to know, like, she's not going to be able to know, or he's not going to be able to. And both those kids did it. Yeah. And um, again, that's just where it's it's such a growing healing process for everyone that touches it. Mm-hmm. You know, the coaches and the volunteers, we grow an immense amount being a part of somebody's life, you know, through a journey like that. It teaches us to reflect and push ourselves more. Um, the athletes obviously grow. The parents that are part of the athletes grow. The family members of those parents, you know, seeing the kids, they grow. And then anyone that sees the videos, and that's why we do the videos, especially with 1836, because they're just ability to storytell. Right. Is because exposure is key, you yeah. know. Like you said, you know, it's it's inspiring for everybody. Yeah. You know, everybody should be pushing themselves. Well, you know, and I, I up until that point, I hadn't seen it. I've only yeah. I had only heard the stories. Yeah. Um, and I knew what you were doing was like, you know, amazing and and all that kind of stuff. But once you like visually see like these kids like transform, transforming into. Yeah. Uh, just a completely different person. Yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. And then at one point they were, um, they were like, you had a DJ going, and they were uh, <laughs> singing "This Is Me" oh, uh, from Greatest gosh. Showman. Yes. and like they're just like on the stage, just and they're singing, dancing, and, and just oh, like the words man. of that song are like perfect. And, and it was just like this one girl just singing it with all her heart, just like "This Is Me." That was Kelly. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. she was just, it, it was just like, man, this whole event was just like so special. Yeah. Just um, so full, yeah. But like you, like I said, like just capturing that story is just vital. Yeah. Um. So let me in on like some of the background of of uh, like what it's like to to run a five hundred one c three. Like, how are you raising funds right now? Like, yeah. What? Because the the one thing I should note, like the parents of these kids, they don't pay for the training, correct? Yeah. I mean, so the last two years we've been we've been able to give full scholarships. You know, the kids and the athletes have one hundred percent covered. You know, the trip, yeah. the equipment the training, everything is 100% covered. And we made a promise when we launched this that in the first two years, 100% plus, and I say plus because I invested a lot of my money in the first year, would go towards the programs and the growth of the message and the mission in these kids. Um, so we have zero dollars going to operations and to people working on the organization. So, you know, in these first two years, it's just been everybody purely giving their passion and their love for these kids and, and what we want to build and, and spread. So, you know, behind the scenes of what everyone else sees, which is the workshops, you know, there's just like any other business, man. I tell people nonprofits, not much different than a for-profit in the sense of trying to connect with a demographic. You know, you're just trying to spread a message. So there's marketing involved, there's building the websites. Right. The only, I feel like the one big difference is there's a lot of events. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to do a lot of fun, you know, fundraising events. Because again, with a nonprofit, you're asking the community, donors, people, foundations to believe in something that you believe in full heartedly right. and trying to get them to believe in that same thing. So that's why the films, the messaging, everything is so important because people have to attach that message. They just do. Um, so, yeah. And so right now, our biggest things we're working on is we're building out a CRM right now. What is for, that? So customer relations management, but basically you could call it DRM donations <laughs> or donor relationship management because um, we're trying to build out this database where we have this history of all of our donors, but also our athletes, also the parents, just so we have this history of how they've been touched and mm-hmm. what how we've worked with them. And so we can com- continue to pro- you know properly progress those those kids. So we're building that out right now, which is one of those things where – this is, I think these are the things people in business, nobody enjoys is it's so much upfront work, Sure. but you just know, okay, in 10 months, this is going to make the next 10 years so much easier, but man, those 10 months are going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's where we're at with this. It's just like, 
you could literally work 12 hours on it and you're like i didn't do anything (laughs) (laughs) so it's just a very humbling experience to build this whole thing out because you're building out onboarding processes program processes volunteer processes all these things and so Building that out, um, that's a big thing we're implementing right now. Another thing we're working on, which I guess, you know, I'll use your podcast to announce Oh, hell yeah. To Let's it. go. No one knows. Um, so this is the first time we're mentioning it, but we will have an official Adventure for All office space in January 2023 oh, yeah, in the dude. Rosemary District. Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. no more running it out of your house. No more running it out of, <laughs> out of anywhere. I get, out of 10 coffee shops, right? So, uh, so yeah, we, we had um, an unbelievable family donate the space. No and way. The rent. And so, wow. you know, we're going to start fundraising here shortly for the build out mm. so that, again, it speaks to our athletes, you know, and what we want for them in their future. And so we're designing that now. You know, and we're building that out. So that's another thing behind the scenes that we're working on. And that space will eventually be used for some educational job uh, placement um, programs that we're going to start the kids. implementing in the next couple of years. So it's expanding, like, just outside of just, like, hey, we're going to go on these adventures, but we're actually going to, like, help you succeed, like, in, yeah. all, in multiple areas of your life. Yeah. So, again, like, this was something I didn't mention early on just because it was like, well, let's first conceptualize right. and prove the concept that, these adventures do instill growth. Let's first prove that. <laughs> um, but I've I've had a ten year vision since day one on where it was going to go. Right. And um, so ever since we've proven that these traits are being instilled through these programs, yeah, the whole the purpose all along has been once they graduate from like one of our higher end programs, it's like one of those being gravel and giving okay. programs. So like that program is where after they learn how to ride a bike, we train them for six months to go do a big gravel race somewhere in the country. So okay. like we take them to gravel worlds, so they do a 31 mile gravel race. And so again, it's now teaching them to not only do things that they love and enjoy, but then how do you take the things you enjoy and then train for them, mm-hmm. right? So now implementing the love for something into the work for something to earn like something bigger with that thing you love. So I love biking. Cool. Like then let's see what it feels like to cross a finish line on that bike. Right. You know, and give them that bigger goal. So showing them that, Life is full of never-ending milestones and goals. And so once they've graduated one of those, then we're built – well, Danny's going to be the big lead on this and building this out. But, um, you know, it's, it's kind of her her baby yeah, you know, yeah. that she's super excited to kind of implement and design and develop is, um, you know, an AFA university, basically. It's going to be a two-year program where we're teaching them the basics of getting a job, mm-hmm. um, helping them with a resume, things like that. Um, then the communication aspects that you need for a job, because our job application is going to be based on society based jobs. So like social jobs, like a doorman, um, retail, because we want to get them involved in society right. and within our community. Right. We want them not behind a computer, kind of, again, hidden away. They deserve to be you know, out in the community with us. And so um, and then through that program, we're also working with for profits on how to properly manage and work with those individuals with exceptionalities because again exposure you know mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of for-profits don't hire kids with exceptionalities because they're their fear you know they're they, they've never been around them so it's also like how do i manage them you know their own insecurities of working with those individuals so we're just we kind of found some of the holes um in the world of why the unemployment is over 82 percent for kids oh, with exceptionalities, eighty-two wow. percent yeah. over. It's like eighty-two point eight percent is the Holy unemployment shit. rate. I mean, is that mainly due to employers, or is that parents that are like, ah, they don't need to work; they'll just live with us? Like, <sighs> a lot of things. I was gonna say probably yeah. a little bit of both. I mean, I would say the two main things that I have found when I've dissected this whole thing has been the kids with exceptionalities aren't being given the traits and the tools to actually execute a job, so they don't have the confidence that when things get challenging, that's okay. When you don't understand something, that's okay. And like understanding like friction's a part of the process. Sure. You know, and that's the whole point of our adventure programs that, hey, friction's a part of life and it's a beautiful thing. It helps you grow. And, um, and the other thing being um, the employers themselves not knowing how to work with or manage those individuals. And so us by job coaching them and job coaching them, it's gonna help bridge this gap. And um, one of the other things, which um, yeah, I signed an NDA with the for-profits that we, inter- that we interviewed because I wanted those honest answers from them. But w- another thing was they were worried about um, paying for them for 30 to 60 days to train them when they were like, yeah, but we could hire somebody that's neurotypical and it would take two or three days to train them. And so it's kind of hard for us as a for-profit to take on that expense. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that's fair. And I said, well, there's two things to fix that. One, our program covers the first 30 days of their employment. So you don't have to worry about the first 30 days. 
But second, the retention on individuals with exceptionalities is five and a half years. Oh, wow. So their average time at a job is five and a half years. The average for somebody that's neurotypical in retail is three and a half months. I can imagine, yeah. So I was like, look, guys, you're investing 60 days into somebody that's going to be here for five and a half years at least. This person, yeah, you're investing three days, but they don't. it's a checkpoint for them. This person loves to be here. They're going to be on time. They're going to show up. They're going to be a face that now when customers come in, they always see the same face. Yeah. And they're going to connect with that person. They're going to connect that person to your brand. And so showing for profits that these individuals with exceptionalities are going to be such an incredible asset to your business for retention purposes, branding purposes, customer loyalty purposes. Once they start to see that and understand that, they're going to go, oh, wow, well, why are we not investing in these right. individuals? Because like they're, they're going to be an incredible benefit to our, to our business. And so just educating. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's what you got to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it is getting better. Um, like the last like 15, 20 years, yeah. like, oh, absolutely. In this, yeah. in this world, like yeah. you just like, we understand so much more about yeah. like things like autism and down syndrome yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it just makes sense yeah. outside of like, like the logistics of starting a nonprofit. Like I know yeah. that's been like a super tedious process when yeah. you're trying not to like, you know, you have to, there's so much like federal regula regulations when it comes mm -hmm. to 501c3s just because you, you know, you're, you don't pay taxes. So yeah. the government wants to make sure like we're going to, yeah, you better have a good financial guy. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> exactly. And you do. Yeah. Sean's yes. amazing. Yeah. Um, but, um, outside of like the logistical yeah. hurdles that you have to go through, it would have been like some of like the, the main hurdles as, as far as like adventure for all has experienced in the last couple of years since starting. Mm, let's see. So as an organization or like on a personal level? Both. Both? All right. Um, I know one of my personal things that I've continued to really help, uh, work on is having so many different psychological tools. Okay. Because you know, each individual is so different, right? Like finding what's going to turn that switch on and turn that fire on in them. You know, mm -hmm. what's going to turn that pilot light on to get that fire going so then they're inspired because – the hardest process, the hardest part of our process is it's easy to get them to trust me, right? I'm holding the bike for them when we first start. So once I get them to trust me, they get on the bike, they'll start pedaling, I'm helping them balance, and they, they love it, right? They're fine. The hard part is then giving them the trust they have in me to themselves and saying, look, you need to now trust yourself, mm -hmm. right? And that's where it's hard of like, you got to just push the bike sometimes and let go and go, yeah. You got it, Kelly. Here, you got it, Joey. And, you know, it's it's that moment of when do you let go? Because you let go too early, you know, now you've lost trust with them. Sure. Right now they're like, well, I don't trust you now. You you let go and you made me fall, right? And so it's finding that respect and that balance of at what moment can I let go? And even if they fall, they're going to go, I know you let go because you're trying to help me, not you let go and you let me down. Mm -hmm. So it's like really trying to figure out the, what part of the process for each individual is, is at the right time. Mm -hmm. So that's been one of mine. Um, on an organization level, um, I think <laughs> any nonprofit will speak on this. One of the harder parts is just obviously um, having fundraising, you know, sure. or just, or just having You're in funds. a constant state of fundraising. I, oh, I yeah, constantly, imagine. yeah. I mean, every nonprofit is. So it's just that balance of when do I wear what hat, right? Mm -hmm. When do I wear my operations hat? But when do, I, when do I need to be out in the community in front of people as much as possible, helping them believe in what we're doing? Um, so the biggest hurdle, I guess you could say, is that because – I've been extremely blessed in the sense of since this thing has launched, the universe has been very just kind to me in the sense of it's telling me I'm, I'm following my purpose in life. You know, things that I've, I say out loud that I want or that I need, or like, you know, um, I need guidance on, they just, they fall and they're just like, here you go, you know, or, Hey, oh my gosh, or, you know, I really need funding for this program that we want to launch. It's like all of a sudden in a week, an email will come in and they're like, Hey, I, I, somebody told me about you and I'd love to have a talk. And then all of a sudden, you know, we have funding. I mean, kind of like the office. I was like, man, we're hitting a cap to where I need to hire a few people, but I'd, I only want to hire people if we have a space that we can share that energy. Yeah. You don't want people coming to your house, like yeah. where you live or remote. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's like when you're building something that's so in, you know, so emotional, right. and has so much connection involved. You want to share that energy, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I remember saying that out loud to like the few people that are on the team and then within a month, somebody offered us an office space. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and so I, I think one thing I can tell viewers is don't be afraid to just put it out in the world, man. Yeah. Because sometimes the universe, it's scary to put it out there because now it's real. Right. And now that means, now that it's real, that means you can fall on your face and fail. 
But man, you'd be surprised how many things will sometimes show up if you're mm -hmm. willing to take the risk of just putting it out there. Right. And just telling people like, mm -hmm. hey, what do you need? Oh, I'm needing this. Yeah. You know? Well, I think one of the prerequisites for that too is that I think you have so much loyalty in your friends and the mm -hmm. people that you know because you're such a good dude. Like yeah. you're just, you're like one of the best people I know and you're good to your friends. You're you're good to the people around you. Yeah. Um, you bend over backwards and like you've helped me so much with ONS in the beginning, like yeah. outside of just being one of the best looking models I have. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go. Um, you just you've just been there since day one and there's like this loyalty that's built up and yeah. people get to learn your heart and mm -hmm. when they see a need like that doesn't happen by accident man like yeah. you've invested a lot in the people around you and i think anytime you don't you don't ask often but anytime you've asked me for help like yeah. i will drop anything oh, I, know, yeah. no, I will I drop anything will, yeah. to, to be there for you because you just don't do that very often well like you said i don't do it often either that's yeah. the thing too. i try like you know what i'm asking yeah, it's yeah. like okay i definitely need your help right <laughs> right but kind of like you were saying you know it's like again just even even if you're an entrepreneur you're, or you've thought about starting a business i just want to tell people like it's very humbling sometimes when you look back and i realize <laughs> some of the big things in my life all happened to prepare me for this moment Oh, you know, hundred percent. Like me, yeah. like I used to have a company called Chase Fit, where I was training people for adventures. Right. You know, and that was when I started working with high-end adventure athletes, and I invested a lot of money in that, mm -hmm. and I did not make that money back. I ended up having to close that business down because I just, it just wasn't making me a lot of money. I had a lot of clients, but there was just too much overhead, and so like that was a hard failure for me. That was rough. Like that was like the first thing I really put everything into. It was a big part of who I was. A lot mm -hmm. of me was in it. So I was like, oh, this is humbling. Well, and, and you got injured. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you got injured like uh, you broke your collarbone in a snowboarding accident, yeah. right? Oh yeah, shatter my AC joint. Yeah. All every tendon in there was shattered. Well, I think that was like bone. probably the lowest I had seen you personally. Like yeah. I remember sitting at a coffee shop, you and me talking, and you're just like, I'm just down. Yeah, I'm. I, I can't. I can't train. Mm -hmm. I can't do adventures. Like yeah. I. It, and it was literally it was three months after I shut down Chase Fit. Yeah. So it's literally in a matter of four month period, right. like the thing that keeps me balanced <laughs> is working out and training right. and then and working. Like I love those two things. I do love to work. Like I just, I love building things and seeing things come to life. And that's why I love helping my friends do it because I feel like there's no better feeling than something showing up in here and all of a sudden it's here. And you're right. like, holy shit, this, this is real now. Yeah. Like, like your <laughs> shirt. I'm sure the yeah. first time you laid a shirt down, you're like, I fucking designed that. Well, th that was actually, um, like, I was warned about that before it happened. So okay. when my mentor, Scott, he was just like, there's going to be a moment because yeah. you've spent the last year and a half creating this thing. There's yeah. going to be a moment when you finally get that first piece of clothing mm -hmm. with your tag and it's exactly the way you want it. Yeah. And I, so I was like mentally preparing, like, yeah, okay, yeah, we yeah. gotta, we gotta like take a lot of mental pictures. <laughs> and I did, man. Like it was just, you pull it out of the box and you're just like, Holy shit. Yeah, it's emotional. It's super it's emotional. Super emotional. <laughs> like I know as cheesy as that sounds yeah. like okay, get off your high horse, you only like make clothing. Like yeah. no, it was like because you, like you said it's it, hundreds of hours it, are in it, that it, shirt in this goddamn <laughs> shirt. Yeah. <laughs> like like so many hours right. and time yeah. and late nights yeah. and tired days are in this freaking shirt right yeah. now. Like yeah. holy crap. Well, and the thing that people don't recognize too is like when you have something like this that you've built from the ground up yeah. and you're just it's something you're thinking about all the goddamn time. Yep. It, uh, it doesn't turn off. It does not. No. Like, I have to be, be like, really intentional because intentional, like, I've got kids. I've got a mm -hmm. wife. I want to be present. Yeah. I, don't, I will give up everything in my life before I give up my family. Yeah. So ONS will go out the door before I give up yeah. my family. Yeah. And, and it shows, man. You are one of the best dads I've ever seen. Man, the way you are with your girls and the way they look at you, man. I know it's hard you see it because you're the dad, but yeah, man, yeah. like when I come over and I see, oh, man, those girls love you so much, man. Mm -hmm. no, hey, I love great. them You're a great much. dad. Well, I'll try yeah. to be. I fail at it a lot. But <laughs> oh, he's blushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, though, it's just like it's, it's a constant problem that you're trying to solve, um, and there's no playbook, no. you know, you can – because a lot of people are like, well, it just takes hard work. Yeah, a lot of people work really hard in the wrong direction. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I'll see people like the universe is telling them, like, they're just hitting. And that's why I tell people is you have to be able to recognize when is this an obstacle that life is delivering to me to go through mm -hmm. because it's going to help me grow the business more at, through that wall? Or are there continuous walls because it's like, bro, I want you to ricochet off this wall and go to another way because mm -hmm. this isn't where you're supposed to be. And, um, 
my final wall with Chase Field was like, hey, you have no more money. <laughs> so, like, you so, technically can't do this Yeah, anymore. the universe made the decision So, unless you, you go yeah. get a loan and really put yourself in debt, right. you're done. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'm done. Yeah. And um, But, again, what a beautiful thing, man, that I, like— Well, if th- you would have continued with it, you wouldn't yeah. have started Adventure for All. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. it was—because it, Adventure for All came— after that, it was five months after that. Cause I mean, I took like a five month, almost like leave of just like, I'm just going to journal a lot and figure out what am I doing in my life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, you know, 28 and I'm like, what am, what am I doing? You know, I need to like really find something that, and I've always been that way though. I just want to be passionate about the things I'm putting my energy into. So yeah. And came up with Adventure for All and man, it's, it's going to be something I'm working on the rest of my life, man. Like mm-hmm. I want to see this thing. I just want to see these kids have intention in life yeah. and purpose. I mean, imagine if we got out of high school and somebody said, hey, man, these are your options. You can put the size tags on hangers or you can gro- you can bag groceries. Which one do you want? And those were your options. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, man. Like, um, And then also, not even two of these options, but like, actually, there's no availability either, though. Yeah. But like, when one opens up, let us know which one you'll want. It's like, man, like when you really broaden it and you really think about it from their perspective, you're like, man, that's tough. Hmm. You know, like... That's why even through the stuff we're doing, it's like I want to find what they love. Mm-hmm. You know, like one of our one of our athletes is um, we're gonna be announcing him as our first adventure athlete for Adventure for All, like a okay, like one of the faces for Adventure, like for a Fall. sponsored, becoming athlete. a sponsored yeah. adventure athlete yeah. because, you know, on the trip I was you know we always ask kids, what's your dream job? Like, what do you want to do? Like with your life? Like, what's something that you just love doing? And kind of find it that's drawing, is that painting? Is mm-hmm. it? And um, this kid in particular. Um, you'll know the name <laughs> come January, but yeah, yeah. he, um, he was like, I just, I want to be an adventure athlete and I want to be a coach like you and coach Danny. Oh, hell yeah. And I was yeah. like, done. So yeah. he's going to be our, one of our first, um, coaches for adventure for all two assistant coaches. So he's actually going to be a part of our programs next year, being an assistant coach, helping other kids like him do what he did, mm-hmm. which again, it's just going to be beautiful for those kids entering the program. Like, look, here's another individual, you know, just like you. And he's coaching you now. Right. Like, that's inspiring for these kids to see that, like, all right. That's fucking unbelievable, dude. It's awesome. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> just like, and it's just endless, man. We have such a, a big vision, but, you know, the priority, as you know, is quality over quantity, man. Mm-hmm. So we're just, we're in this space of where we will constantly, as an organization, prioritize the quality that each kid gets over how many kids we can reach. Mm-hmm. Because by focusing on that, the funds will come, the expansion will come, and the lives being impacted will come. Well, so. I mean, I can I understand that on a very like micro level, like with ONS, like yeah. I very in, you know me, like I'm mm-hmm. super picky about like <laughs> yeah. like what I put out. Yeah, there has been a lot of samples and a lot of yeah. items that I have gotten, and if I didn't care as much, I would have just been like, "Yep, just run it." Yep, I don't give a shit if it looks like crap, like yeah. or it's not the right fit or it's not the right material yeah. or whatever it may be. Because like in these early days, like everybody's judging you. Oh yeah, everybody's. Well, judging they're waiting you. to judge you too. Sure. They're like, oh, I can't wait to this come out so yeah. I can, so yeah. I can judge it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, my favorite is like, uh, producer Kyle over here. You know, <laughs> he's 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 the first one to criticize anybody. But, um, <laughs> I and, love. And, and I lo- and I love him for it. He he makes me a better person. Um, but when he's I, he's always like that one that's like. I'm gonna want to hate this uh-huh. because so I can give you shit for it. Yep. And then when he puts it on, he's just like, "All right, fuck, this, this, <laughs> this is pretty, pretty good. good. This is pretty so it's good. like, like I, I, I'm trying to like think, okay, who, what are the haters gonna say about yeah. this, right? Yep. And, um, and that's, but again, like everybody's judging you by your mm-hmm. first fruits, like your oh, first yeah. thing that you're bringing. Like yep. people are gonna, so like I want to bring my best. Yep. I'm not an H and M that will just put yep. out whatever yeah. and be. Oh, completely okay yep. with using kids to like manufacturing their yep. manufacture. Or their just clothing. throwing your logo on these shirts that are already pre-made. And, sure, you know, yeah, whatever. It's like, man, like you said, like I gotta speak on the fit for a second because again, I've seen you lay out a shirt and literally do your own measurements, put it on. I'm like, okay, we need like a half inch here and this, and we need to add, you know, a little bit lower here so it doesn't. You know what I mean? I've like you said, you're just so detailed, man. Yeah. But again, that's why, like, when you put it on, you're like. All right, <laughs> this feels pretty good. This feels you know? pretty good. Because again, like it's very hard. Like you said, it's easy to make clothing. It's hard to make clothing that makes people feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a difference. There is. There just is. And like you said, man, when you put it, put that on and you're like, I feel good. I feel fucking good. Like yeah. you just carry yourself differently. You do. And I'm like, I, you know, it's just it's a it, again, it bleeds into your life when you feel good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, yeah. and I think um, I think that's just what we have to do right now. Yep. It's just what it is. Yep. Like, 
I like you said, quality over quantity. Yep. Like scaling longevity, this, man. Yeah. You know, we're looking. You know, we're not looking for the quick buck. You know, no. or, or the or the quick change or the quick impact. We're looking to to build something. That, if I was looking for the quick buck, yeah. I would have been out of this a long yeah, time exactly. ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> like remember back when we were talking about like passion is what oh, that has yeah. to drive you because yeah. there was this one uh, entrepreneur I was listening to. I think he was. Um, it was something to do with like uh, cryptocurrency. I think he made okay. like, a, like an app to, to go inside, coincide with cryptocurrency. Okay. And he's like, you know, when you're in year three and you're being sued by your co-founder and uh, you have no money in the bank and you have so many fires that are burning all around you and you're just like, I still don't know if this is going to work. Uh-huh. He's like, the only thing that's going to keep you going is passion. Yeah. If you don't fucking have that, like, yeah. you're going to give up. Like, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, find something you do have passion yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, your life is going to be sucked from you. Exactly. You know, like, you're going to end up just hating everything. Exactly. And so, yeah, it's, it's very much finding that. I know... You know, many other podcasts, many other people speak on passion, but like it's just because it's that important. You know, it's like mm-hmm. people reiterate it and like don't reinvent the wheel. If you're hearing something over and over again, listen to mm-hmm. it. You know, you just you just have to find those things in life because, and again, I, I tell people this too. Like, there's certain people in life um, that are extremely happy with an eight to five, and that's awesome. Yeah. But you'll notice those people that are that are, that are happy within their eight to five found a passion outside of their eight to five. Okay. Whether it's like. Oh man, I really love rock climbing. So I do that. Like I go three times a week, and I go do it in the at the facility. Or I love, you know, flying planes. So they get their their you know, you know, flight you know, uh, license or mm-hmm. whatever. Right. It's just like if you don't have the ability or the the self belief yet to go build something on your own, mm-hmm. still instill your passions in your into your life. Like mm-hmm. find that balance. Because if not, like you said, it's just it's just gonna make you miserable. <laughs> no, I I agree, and I think. Um, I definitely don't think entrepreneurship is for everyone, but I would encourage people to at least try it just so they can, yeah. like, you can at least uncover that rock and be like, do I like it? No, yeah. I don't fucking like it. Yeah. I'm going to close it. at least it. understand it <laughs> yeah. more. And you, but it brings you an understanding of, like, so now, like, since I have started a business, yeah. I am so much more intentional of helping other businesses. Yeah. Like, yep. when there's a local spot that opens up like i want to be there to support them and i want to get to know the owner and i want and the founder and just Mm -hmm. like shake their hand and be like what can i do to help you like i will try my best to always like support other businesses it's just like i tell people always be a waiter or a waitress yeah like i did that for six months a lot more compassionate oh yeah i did that that for six months and and, like i'll see a girl or guys having a tough day and i'll go hey go take care of them i'm in no hurry you you know it's all right and they're like oh thank god you know, and, and then also you just you tip better too because yeah. you're like, man, like, and if if you are culture and you've traveled traveled to other countries, mm-hmm. you do not get spoiled with a waiter or waitress anywhere else you go. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like here's your water, I'm gonna bring you your food. And that's the best you're getting from me because like they're paid higher. Like over here, they're working for tips. Like you get it's an experience, you know, in mm-hmm. the United States. And like it's funny, you, you go to Europe or other countries, it's not like that. It's not an experience. Yeah, they like, don't tip there. Like that's what I mean. Like yeah. they're they're paid well, so they're not trying to earn. Mm-hmm. a tip from you so yeah. they don't really care <laughs> about your experience they get paid either way yeah, yeah they're like you know i'm gonna get paid either way so like here's your water I don't, you know if you need a refill you better wave me down because i'm not gonna check in so i just think we take those things for granted sure. so yeah i'm just speaking on like you said there's certain things in life that i feel like we should all experience because it just allows us to to have more understanding and perspective of those things yeah like one of the definitions of compassion is putting your per- yourself in the, another person's story yeah um and you know, just obviously, like with what you do, you yeah. you can put yourself in somebody else's story really mm-hmm. easily, and that just develops like a compassion for, say, a parent that yeah. has been struggling to find, like, how can I have my kid fit in this world? Like, mm-hmm. he just, you know, he's struggling, and then you come along, and you're just like, hey, I've got something for him yeah. that's gonna expand his ability and mm-hmm. his life and it's just going to make it more fulfilled and yeah. he's going to become a different person through and this then, program and then you're going to become a different person sure seeing them do that sure. you know yeah. And, yeah there's like you have no idea like what the ripple effects of what you're doing yeah. is going to to yeah. cause and there i remember um after your first i think it was your first adventure trip yeah. um last year i remember calling calling you and uh just like we were talking about how it went you were just going through all these amazing stories and i just remember having this moment of like 
I'm really fucking jealous. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really jealous because he's like found something that has brought so much joy yeah. and fulfillment in his life. And not to say like the things that I do for work yeah. don't bring me fulfillment and joy. They really do. But man, it was on fire. Like it just yeah. was so in my face. Like it was just, <laughs> it was a beautiful thing to see. Like, yeah. um, just especially like seeing you go on that roller coaster um since we've been friends of just like oh, man, hot man. on like these businesses and then you just you, you get and injuries just, yeah. and you're just in this low place and i just yeah. i just remember it would like broke my heart having that conversation with you in the coffee shop just yeah. like i i don't feel motivated to do anything and yeah. i'm like who the fuck are well, you who are you yeah, <laughs> like, was, yeah man Chase. it was like but again to be able to again tell people like to be able to express those things to have people in your life you can express those to that's how you get through them you know because I think some of us, you know, we just kind of push that down and we're like, let's just pretend like that's not there. But I feel like being able to just admit that, hey, I'm in a place where I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like I, I'm scared and I'm down and like, you know, I'm that's part of life. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm going to accept that. That's how I feel. But I need to figure out why I feel that way yeah. and how can I get out of this? And um, so I was just telling man, reflections, beautiful thing, man. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to sit in the darkness sometimes mm -hmm. so you can just you know grow out of it grow out of the dark so. well one of the things i took from you um is that just like starting to like even just like processing feelings uh ideas for the mm -hmm. business is you write you write a lot mm -hmm. i never i never did that before like yeah. i i remember just going through something just recently and i literally just like i whipped out my phone i was in my car and i just wrote yeah just wrote yep. like what am i feeling right now mm -hmm. um and dude, it was like so therapeutic to like <laughs> yeah. take those thoughts and like try to like put them on paper, and it just like helped me solve the problem yeah. kind of in my own head. Yep. Um, what? Why? Why do you do that? Like, what inspired you? Like, where'd you learn that process from? It's interesting. Um, I think honestly, just like podcasts and reading books. Like one book, um, or uh, one podcast I really love is like Aubrey. You yeah, know, Aubrey Marcus. Yeah. yeah, I love Aubrey Marcus. Yeah. Um, you know, listening to his podcast, uh, Joe Rogan obviously has certain people on his podcast that you know just are inspiring to listen to. But yeah, I think just listening to enough people that had success and happiness in life, and like, hey, what are they doing? Because mm -hmm. again, I'm, I'm just a big believer in like, start off, don't reinvent the wheel. See the things that are working for people that inspire you, and what's working for them, and try them. Just mm -hmm. try. And so for me, I started off trying those like structured journals where it's like, you know. Um, what are your, like, what are you grateful for? Give me three things you're grateful for, right? It has these certain questions and every day is the same page. Mm -hmm. I hated it. I fucking hated it so much. <laughs> and it's like, some people love that. So like, yeah, like yeah. Danny, that's what she does. She loves it and yeah. it works for her. For me, I was like, I feel like I'm taking a quiz and I feel like if I don't have three answers, now I have like, I feel bothered that I'm not filling out this page and like, and now there's pressure of like, what if there's more than three, right? I just didn't like it. So for me, the process was not good. So at first, when I first started writing, I was like, oh, this isn't for me. So I actually went to voice memos for a little while. Okay, nice. And again, just like, because I always tell people, like, sometimes it's nice to express to somebody, but if you're, sometimes, you know, again, if you're afraid to say it, you know, to tell it to somebody, just say it to yourself. Because again, saying it out loud does make that, like, that feeling, that sick to your stomach feeling kind of regress. So doing a voice memo. And don't worry, you don't have to re-listen to it, mm -hmm. but just get it out, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then from there, I actually, my writings turned into a lot of poetry. Okay. So I write a lot of poetry. And so I kind of take a feeling of what I have about something. And what I'll do first is I'll write a poem about that feeling. And the reason why is like when I write a poem about something, like I'll read about that feeling. I'll read like, you know, what is, where did it, where did it come from? Like mythology, whatever. And it helps me understand that feeling more. And then I'll write something about it. And then I'll take that feeling on what it's, you know, whatever the thing is. So like, hey, I have this new idea for the business. And I have this feeling about it. Well, now that I understand this feeling really well, I can understand how it's gonna, how it's applying to that idea. Okay. So for me, it's just been poetry. It's been my way of writing. Yeah. And, or like you said, free writing. Like, don't worry about commas and punctuation mm -hmm. and all that. Just write. Yeah. You know, misspellings. Like, it doesn't. Yeah. Matter. Just yeah. who cares? Man? Yeah. Just scribble that shit on the paper yeah. and just go. Well, Jordan Peterson likes to say, you know, if you're not writing, you're not thinking. Yeah. Um, oh, I and, love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then there was it's a true. visual <clears throat> that he. I think it was him that gave it that, but like putting, putting your thoughts on paper, um, or ideas, it doesn't have to be anything like yeah. super, um, philosophical or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's just processing through thoughts. Yeah. And the analogy he gave is like, what's better, like holding water in your hands 
or filling up a cup, what's going to hold more water? Yeah. And that's the difference between trying yeah. to hold your thoughts yep. in your brain as opposed to writing them down. It's a great paper. visual. Yeah, it's no, it's really, visual. really good. And yeah. I've I've seen the benefit of that. Yeah, um, it is really helpful. Yeah. And just like listing out like. Like, what are we going to accomplish this year mm -hmm. or in the next five years mm -hmm. or in the next three days? Like, what are the things yeah. that I'm going to try to accomplish mm -hmm. today? And those things may change. But yeah. again, they're there. You know, you're starting with something right. that you can reflect back on. No, that's a good point. It I, makes sense that, like, <clears throat> you're you're a very detailed person. You're a very, like, structured person. Um, but your thoughts are very, like, whenever I call you, I'm like, hey, yeah. Chase, I got this idea. Yeah. Like, what do you think? I, yeah. I We do those brainstorming sessions yeah. all the time. And it's like... Okay, here's what you need to do. You're going to do this. Yeah. And then, you know, what would be awesome is if you do this. And yeah. then if you do this, oh, and what could coincide yeah, with yeah, this is yeah, this. Yeah. And, like, you just, like, and I'm, like, the trying, dots to, are going <laughs> <laughs> trying to, like, keep up. I'm like, I'm, like, I am listening to what you're saying. I'm just trying to write down everything. Don't, please don't think my, my silence is We're going to start doing Zoom calls and uh, just it's, record them. It's got to be. Just hit record. Yeah. It's, it's got to be something like that. Because you're right. I love those talks. Yeah. yeah I'll but just it's, spiral. So it makes sense that, like, a structured journal of asking you questions yeah. would just be bullshit for you. Yeah, it like, just felt like just friction. You know, I was like, wait, the whole point of this is to reduce friction. I right. Can to let go. Mm -hmm. And so, and I tell people, too, like, Another thing I do, if it's not poetry, I'll write down questions first. So I'll like literally list myself questions. Or as I'm writing, if you notice, like as you're expressing yourself, all of a sudden, because again, when you're writing, you're right, you're having to think about it mm -hmm. and then think about putting it down. So you're having to create an action from that thought. So if I'm writing, you notice while you're writing, you hesitate to write something. It's like, wait, why am I hesitating to write that? Mm. Like there must be something attached to that. Yeah. To why I'm not just writing past it. If something made me pause, then ask the question, why am I pausing in this moment? And so then having to stop and then write something about why you paused and then understand it and then keep writing. Right. I'll do that sometimes too because it's like, there's so much subconscious things happening sure. all the time in yeah, our life. Yeah. You know, like subconscious is crazy if you yeah. really start to try to understand it and, and read about it. And so like, the subconscious pause for a reason. There's mm -hmm. something. There's something going on there. So yeah. you know, figure it out. Well, the last two podcasts I've done have been uh, pretty mind-numbing podcasts. One was uh, with Dr. Troy Doucet, who's a yeah. um, philosophy uh, professor um, out of. Uh, he graduated from Oxford. Okay. Um, and just just brilliant dude. And yeah. we talked a lot about like the conscious and subconscious. Yeah. And then same with Kevin O'Hara. This yep. one that just released. Uh, dude's a just a genius. Yeah. Um, and when you have s two guys that are that smart mm -hmm. that don't understand consciousness yeah. or yeah. subconscious, like you're like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll never understand it. Sure. That's the thing. Because like, yeah. again, like that's, that's the beauty of the body, like, the way the body's designed, you mm -hmm. know, we're just, we, whether it's walls or there's things in our childhood that we've blacked out or whatever, like our body's designed mm -hmm. to protect us. Right. And again, that's why there's so much power in overcoming things because you, you start to show yourself that, oh, I have some control in this process. Like, yeah. I don't have to just, you know, if, if a fear pops up, like, oh, okay, I shouldn't do that. It's like, no, like you have some control in this process for your life. And so like being able to teach yourself to push through those things or understand those things is, is awesome. What brought you to like wanting to confront those things? Because like most people would just like push that aside and be like, oh, we're going to leave that for another day. Yeah, I think um, – <clears throat> So I, you kind of know this, but I guess the audience doesn't know this. So I grew up in a pretty wild childhood. You know, um, my dad was kind of into drugs and was kind of alcoholic. You know, just not not a good childhood growing up. So you, I feel like you know, as a, as his only son, you know, as you're growing up, you kind of look at your father's like this is who I'm supposed to emulate, right? right? When you're growing up, and because that's your only really person you have as your hero. And but at, my mom got me out of that situation around eight. You know, she kind of took me and my sisters and, you know, we got away, um, you could say. But during that time of life from like eight to 14, I was like, I had this weird battle of like these traits of me that were from him, like anger and just like, you know, just whatever, these bad traits that were developed by watching him because I was trying to emulate him. Right. And feeling every time I would have those things, I was like, oh, I don't like feeling this way. I don't want to be that person. So I made this conscious decision at a young age of like you know what like let's take that experience and let's be exactly opposite of that <laughs> and that's how it started right i just right. want to be not that person yeah and so it's funny because at a young age i started doing that right and okay i want to be kind i want to be these things i don't you know and that's why like i don't drink you know mm -hmm. i don't do any like i just want to like again like i wanted to just not be him and what's funny at around 21 you know on this hard path of not being him 
obviously there were some demons there of me trying to avoid in every possible way of being this person that was my dad. And so that was hard. And so then I was like, okay, I can't avoid this anymore. Because that was my way of avoiding him was like, well, if I'm not him at all, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to remember that. I can just avoid. And so I don't know. I guess around 21, 22, I just, I felt like I was still in this like, you know, you just, maybe you don't know, but people listening probably know there's some people in life where you just don't know who you are. Oh, yeah, again, I was, I get that. I didn't want to be this person. So I was trying to be this person. So I wasn't him, but it was like, okay, I don't want to try to be anybody. I just want to be me. And so I don't know. I just realized that like to be you is just to understand yourself. So I just started trying to dissect my childhood and dissect like the things that I've forgotten. And so what were the know. things that helped you kind of do that? Um, I think my mom, okay. you know, her being somebody that, I mean, sacrificed everything to give me an opportunity in life. Right. I mean, to work, to, to leave that situation, to have the, you know, just the bravery to get us out of that situation, but then to like work three jobs just so that like she could put food on the table. You know, sometimes we're living out of a car, you know, like there was moments where it was just, it was low of a low, but she just never stopped fighting, you know, because she like, it was beautiful. Cause like she was no longer fighting for herself. She was like, I just need to give my kids a chance in life. And so, like, her fighting so hard to give us that chance, I was like, I'm not going to squander this chance, man. Like, she gave me an opportunity to to do something with my life, so I'm going to make sure that I do something with it. And so, like, I was like, if she has the bravery and courage to do that for me, like, I need to have the courage to to go back to my traumas and these things that are triggering me and, and making me and limiting my growth and my success. Because one of my biggest things was I was afraid to build businesses because I didn't feel like I was worthy. I didn't think I was worthy of success because, you know, growing up with a dad that, you know, one of my biggest memories that I had to deal with that I went back and saw was I was really good at football at a young age, Mm -hmm. like really good at football because, again, I just wanted to get his attention. Like I just want to be the best at something so that he's proud of me. And so I remember my first punt, pass, and kick competition. I was seven years old, and they put me in the age group of five to eight, and I got first in every category by like a long shot. And so they were like, okay let's put this kid in the nine to 12 year old and let's just see how he does. So in pass, I got first in um, punt. I got first and in kick, I got third. And so I go back, I have six medals, man. Five are first, one is third, you know, and I'm so proud, man. I go back to the house and my dad, you know, he takes them. He's kind of tossing the first places and he's like, he's like, Oh, third place. He's like, so you were the second loser. Jesus. You know, like that was, and so like that moment, I remember like that moment as you know, as you look back or you hear it, you're like, God, that's rough. But that moment did help develop my work ethic, you know, because ever since that moment, I was like, oh, I'm never going to not get first again. Mm -hmm. So, again, I I built this incredible trait from a negative experience. Mm -hmm. So, again, having to go back to that and go, okay, I don't want to no longer do I want to have good work ethic because of this negative experience. I want to I want to forgive this experience and forgive that moment. But I want to continue to carry my work ethic because it's really helped me have an op- have chance in life to like do the things I want to do. So just trying to So like redefining the foundation for that that trait but all yeah. but ma- wanting to maintain that trait. Yeah, yeah so yeah. like it, it, trying to attach yeah, so basically trying to attach those the traits that you enjoy about yourself to to good things. Like mm-hmm. again, I want to work hard because I want to impact these kids in these in this mission. Mm-hmm. Um not because um I don't want to be, you know, I not because I don't want to be the second loser or mm-hmm. if I'm not first, I'm te- I suck. Yeah. You know, because that's how a lot of my life was. If I didn't get first, I was so hard on myself. It didn't matter if it was a board game. It didn't matter, like, what it was. I was constantly fighting for first in everything, mm-hmm. which, again, was good in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> but um, bad in a lot of ways. Sure. So until I kind of went back and dissected that that situation and forgave that moment, um, it was it was very healing for me. Mm-hmm. And I think once I did it the, that one time and realized how healing it was, I was like, okay. This is this is the path I want to I want to follow this path for life. I want to continue to find these things and try to dissect these things, so I can just because we'll never find the best versions of ourselves in this lifetime. But it's a fun fucking path to try. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really fun path to be on because you know again you start to fall in love with friction and challenges and hard times, and right. you just you just find more gratitude in life. I would 100 percent agree with that. And I mean, obviously, you're seeing that fruit come to life um, with the kids and in, in your own life. And I mean, even in my story, like um, I was like not a good like student in high yeah. school, like 
I just wanted to like play music yep. and and really I just didn't do I barely squeaked by my ability yeah. to take tests was why I graduated high school because I didn't do any fucking homework yeah. like I didn't do anything <laughs> yeah. but I'm a good test taker okay. so I was able to graduate with a C yep. average you yep. know and I graduated high school um, and was I started college <clears throat> and uh, I just didn't want to do it yeah I was just lazy yeah. I was really really lazy and uh, it wasn't until I found like lifting and mm -hmm. uh, the discipline that that required mm -hmm. um, and one of the one of the main purposes was because Laura like yeah. <clears throat> I started dating Laura and I'm like man this girl's really in shape I gotta get it together <laughs> 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 and oh, so, um, but it was like one of those situations where like that it's, it sucks yeah. in the beginning. Like, I want to I go back to something you said. I'm curious. So, like, when you said you went to college, right, and you're just like, man, I didn't want to be there. Take me back to that moment. Like, didn't um, did you feel guilt for that? Well, I think it was more pressure. Like, um, my dad, like, just never gave me the option. Yeah. Like, you're going to go to school. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents moved from Puerto Rico uh, before I was born. Um, this was, they moved here in the, <clears throat> like, early 80s okay um yeah. and there was a really bad recession in puerto rico like okay. it was basically like there's more jobs yeah in in the u.s yep. uh so they i mean all my family's in puerto rico so like i always like talk to them about like i know you weren't like immigrants but you basically <laughs> yeah. were like immigrants yeah, you didn't have to get a yeah. green card because yeah. you know that it's a u.s territory but like they didn't, they didn't speak english yeah. all of their family was still back in puerto rico and so they just moved here for a better life yeah. um and so I've carried a lot of guilt. Like I need to make something of myself yeah, yeah. because like they sacrifice they a lot. Sacrifice a lot yeah. Um, and you know, that work ethic came from both my parents, like yeah. my, both my parents worked so hard. Yeah. Um, and then as I became a teenager, I'm like, I'm, I was just didn't want to do anything yeah. like every teenager. Yeah. <laughs> like I just didn't want to do shit. Yeah. Um, and, but I felt like I owed it to my parents. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, f I feel a, a very, like, massive responsibility for my parents and yeah. um, just my family in general. But it's like, interesting. They, they probably don't even – do they put that on you now still? Nope, or not at all. I mean. It's all self-imposed. I know. Like, <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's so funny. Look yeah. back, you're like – just like my mom was like, by the way, I gave you this opportunity, so you better do something. Like, my mom would never say that, but it was no. just this, like – No, it is all self-imposed. Yeah, it's like, wild how that happens. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I, – and, and, you know, I saw, like, how much, especially my mom, just, like, worked her ass off yeah. to provide, yeah. you know, and I was – the minute I could have a job, I had a job, yep. you know, and just start here. bringing yep. money in. Mm -hmm. But I always lacked that, like, it mainly centered around school. Like, yeah. I, I got into music when I was 15 mm -hmm. um, and just dove head. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I fucking loved it. Was it the expression? Was it the feel? Like, what what about it did you I, feel? It was like, oh, man, like, I just, I'm, no, I'm I don't first. I don't know. Like, I really don't. Um, was it the escape? It was the girls. Yeah. No, yeah. it was the girls. Yeah. Like, girls love a guy with a guitar yeah. but and but, uh, that's good looking yeah 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 that's not fair i wasn't good looking back then um <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough <laughs> um but no i i think outside of that it was i, I very like um i know you know me now as yeah. like i'm like i'm not a super like crazy dude yeah pretty chill yeah as a kid i was super hyper yeah um and i think one of the the therapeutic things of music yeah. really helped me helped you be still just be still yeah. and concentrate yeah, um, yeah and i think that was my biggest problem with okay. with school like yeah. i just but again I'm, back to like the eight to five thing i was saying right school was your eight to five right but you right. found this passion yeah. outside of it that like got you through it yeah and know? i just and, like, i dove happiness. yeah i dove really deep into it yeah um but again to like this like self-imposed like guilt and i still like carry a lot of guilt and yeah. even though i'm married to a therapist like yeah. <laughs> yeah. she helps me sometimes yeah. with that stuff and it's it's a beautiful thing to be married to somebody who's yeah. like this is her world can and guide some of those exactly. things exactly yeah, for sure um but i still carry like this guilt of just like i need to take care of my family yeah um as an adult now like yep. um I saw how much my parents sacrificed mm -hmm. and I saw how much, how hard they fucking worked. Yeah. Man. Like, I mean, my dad's 71. Yeah. Still works a full time job. Yeah. Not because he has to, because he just yeah. loves it. He yeah. just wants to work. He's yeah. like, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. sit at home <laughs> like, and do nothing. And yeah. do nothing. Yeah. And like, you know, my mom just out of necessity needed yeah. to work hard. And yeah. like, she's just, um, she, it, it, so those like principles were instilled. Yeah. I just hadn't like found like that outside of music like i hadn't found anything that like i could tap that potential into mm -hmm. and like channel that potential mm -hmm. into and then when i started working out like 
Yeah, you the, see the progress. Like, well, oh, the this and, is cool. and the so that that energy was like channeled into this yep. thing, and it became very much who yeah. like part of my identity. Yeah. Um, like you say, and like when you were twenty one, like yeah. Nobody knows who they fucking are at 21. No. But, like, you f- but there's this weird, at least for me, there was this societal guilt of like, I should have this figured out. Yeah. Like I, at that age, yeah. it's like, I mean, I know now that I'm 31 looking back, I'm like, you're yeah, right. right. Like, you're a baby. You're constantly figuring yeah. it out. Even if you're in your passion, you're still constantly figuring things out through life. That's what at least you should be, right? That's what life is. Like, hey, I'm constantly figuring myself out and figuring life out. But like at 21, man, you think like, this is, I should be doing X and this is how my next 40 years should go. Right. And you think you should have this you know schedule laid out but man there's just no clue i mean it's funny earlier we were talking about you know like every every 15 year old you know is crazy where but unless you're noah you know he's like the most like you know the few times i met that kid man he is just so focused but i know he carries that pressure too sometimes oh, of thinking like i should have life figured out right. like i should I, everything should be working and everything should be planned out and like i should be here in three years and be and it's like guys like if you think like that Life will humble you until you figure out that, like, that's just not how it works. You're going like, to lead a very unhappy yeah. life. I mean, set vision. Sure. But understand that, like, the point from here to here, here, here to here is not going to be this. It's going to be, like, mm-hmm. a big scribble, and then you're going to maybe get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you're going to land higher. Who right. knows? But it's, like, right. it's just not going to be this this straight line yeah. that, you know, as much as that's what we want, right, because comfort sometimes feels good, but, man— when you get through a challenge or an obstacle and you get on the other end of it, you're like, oh, actually, that was pretty beneficial. Like, yeah. That sucked when I was in it. Right. And I always tell people, like, it's one of the most frustrating and beautiful things to learn in life is that, like, challenges are literally your best friend. Mm-hmm. But, man, like, when you know that, you're like, oh, I hate that because yeah. I just want things to be easy sometimes. Right. But then you're like, but I guess I, you know, I'm not going to be better for that. If things are easy. So like, yeah, and I think that the, the litmus <laughs> test is like, okay, who was I five years ago? Yeah. Am I a different person now? Am I a better person now? Yeah. I hope it's yes. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Like, I hope it's yes. Yep. And, you know, we just take those lessons that we learn. I've made so many mistakes. Yeah. Uh, but man. In, in, in my personal life and yeah. in, my, in my business life, like, there's been so many lessons that I've learned, but I truly believe, like, all those failures made me a better person. And I will continue to yep. make stupid decisions yep. and poor choices yep. um but i'm hoping that like you learn from them yeah. right um you know i just what's one of your i'm just curious totally random off topic what's one of your favorite quotes <sighs> oh, shit you want me to go put, first yeah you go first right, let cool, me think about first. one yeah yeah so one of mine is um from jim carrey says the effect we have on others is the greatest currency there is and i remember i found that quote Again, like when I was doing a lot of writing and stuff after, um, you know, Chase Fit kind of, you know, face planted. And um, I was like, it just, I don't know why when I read it, I was like, that's all that fucking matters, man. Mm-hmm. That is all that matters. Like, and I, cause I remember like, you know, when you're building for profits, you start off with passion, but there's just like money plays a role. Cause like without it, it fails. So mm-hmm. you start to hyper focus on money and you're like, I don't care about that though. I don't want to think about the money. I want to think about this thing. And, and it starts to become this. And like, so I don't know why hearing that quote, like it's, I just remind myself, I write it a lot. I remind myself that quote a lot, like, cause none of that matters. Cause at the end of the day, if you're, if you impacted somebody's life in a positive way, like you lived a fulfilling life, Yeah. you know, if you yeah. were able to give somebody else hope or belief or love and something like that, just each day, it's like, man, like that's, you're going to live a very fulfilling life. If you can just give somebody that feeling each day, at least that's, how I try to think, dude. About I, it. I I really I couldn't agree more. Like yeah. that's a great. I had not heard that one. Yeah. Um. Like I think that's you know one of the bigger lessons that I've learned, uh, especially over the last like five years is just like, um, understanding like what is important in life. Yeah. And not sacrificing, and that's why yeah. I say like, and what's important to you in life, right? Right. Not, right. not what's what not every, what's important in life, right? Yeah. Right. Like what's important? That's hard. Yeah. What's important to me? Yeah. And um you know you set those like parameters and you just try to to work within them and you work towards them yeah um but things that act like actually matter like you said like affecting people's life in a positive way mm-hmm. like um uh, i think one of the things that's like built into us is we want to leave leave a legacy mm-hmm. um we want people people will not re like when you when you die mm-hmm. and people are giving you you know the eulogy mm-hmm. they're not gonna be like well, you know, Ricardo drove uh, a Ferrari. Yep. Uh, Ricardo lived in the biggest house I've ever been in my entire life. Yep. 
um, Ricardo, Ricardo um, built a hundred million dollar business. Mm-hmm. That's not what fucking people are going to no, say. No. People are going to say, uh, Ricardo did this. Yeah. Or I remember this time yeah. when I was going through this, Ricardo was there. Exactly. And this, and it, yep. Like those are the things that people remember yep. you for. And just like focusing on those things. Like yep. that's that's what matters. Yep. Like, and, and do we fail at that yep. all the time? Some, am well, I an asshole? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I will be a, the, the first person to tell you like yeah. I could be a complete asshole. Um, but I am, I'm trying, but you're genuine, you're yeah. off the, but you're authentic yeah. and you're raw, yeah. you know, and like, that's, that's all we can be, you know? And, but I tell people all the time, you, you said the word legacy and I, I talk about this a lot with people and I'm like, I feel like, you know, it either happens throughout the process or people are just in general society are confused. Like, I feel like people think legacy is power. Mm. And I tell people all the time, like legacy isn't power. Legacy is the impact we have on people. Mm-hmm. Like you're just saying, you know, like the more people you impact in life in a positive way, they're your legacy. Right. You know, you're worried about building this legacy while you're here and having this power Mm -hmm. and you're going to end up just alone and sad because Mm -hmm. it's like that's not where fulfillment is. Fulfillment's in in helping others and giving to others and connecting with others. Yeah. Um, And so just don't get don't get confused in that process. (laughs) Legacy is power. Legacy is the impact we have on people for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there's um, obviously like within religion, um, Christianity has like. Uh, you know, there's this idea of heaven, yeah. right? And we're like working towards this this mm-hmm. thing of heaven. Like, yeah. and, and what a lot of people don't realize is that um, the Jewish culture, which is basically where Christianity was birthed out of, yeah. um, they didn't believe in heaven. They believed like in some sort of afterlife, but not yeah. like in the sense of like um, heaven is this place that we yeah. go to when we die. Yep. Um, their heaven or the, the thing that they thought of when they were talking Mm -hmm. about legacy was like literally their kids like you living on through your kids and your family like and that legacy was what was so important to them um and i thought that was like super impactful and meaningful it's like okay outside of just the like and that's one of the things that inspires me i know you're not a dad yet but you will have this and you'll be a fucking amazing dad (laughs) when you do be eventually hopefully become a dad um is that like you realize like okay what what am I teaching these girls? Like, yeah. what is the human that I'm help creating? Yeah. Yeah. Because that is the legacy that you're yeah. gonna have as well. Yeah. Um. I remember, uh, we were my oldest daughter Layton, and I. We were uh, taking a hike. It was just the two of us. Yeah. Um. We were hiking on celery fields, um. And there was just like these moments, like to where I was just like, she would ask me a question, yeah. you know, and I just answer it and, um. You could just tell, like, they were just, like, really meaningful. Yeah. Like She's absorbing everything. Yeah, She's like, yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, man. Yeah. Hope I say the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's parenthood, like, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, if you're tr- just, like, if you're trying to be a good parent, yeah. like, you're going to realize, like, just the realization of, like, oh, man, I hope I'm not, like, fucking on my kids or anything. Like, yeah. that, just the realization of, like, okay. You be, That's being a good parent. Being yeah. a good parent yeah. is, like, being aware, like, I'm trying not to mess yeah. up my kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the... Uh, the unfortunate thing about trauma is that you never know what's going to be traumatizing. Yeah, what's going to be the your, thing. That, your dad uh, yeah. probably didn't realize, like, no. how much trauma he caused you by, like, going through your medals and being, like, third place. Yeah, uh, you yeah. Know, you like, I tell st- people, like, those moments yeah. that we have, like, yeah. you remember, like, the space, the color of the couch. Sure. Like, those moments are just so instilled in you, like, holy shit, that yeah. moment was a huge moment. Right. And so, yeah. those, like, that's what's terrifying as, yeah. like, as, like, a dad. Like, <laughs> like, oh, no. There's this, like, so there's this TikTok uh, or instagram challenge thing that uh, some of the guys in the office showed me that it's um they're like you should do this with your kids and they the parent is walks into the room with the videoing their kid and they're yeah. like hey there's this dad across the street that wants to fight me <laughs> but he has two like so if i was doing this with my girls yeah. he has two little girls and if they jump in i need you to fight the two little girls <laughs> and like and getting their kids reactions and some of the kids are just like yeah. let's fucking go let's go <laughs> where like, they at where, where, they, where, at? where are they at i'll i'll beat the shit out of them. Oh these God, kids are like amazing. seven years yeah. old and but some of the kids are like they just got your what back. yeah no 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 i don't yeah. want to do that and i'm just like they're like you should do this with your kids and i've been like wrestling with like should i do it yeah. should i do it and i'm like God damn it! This is gonna give them yeah. trauma. Like I'm and not I, gonna well, do yeah, it. Yeah. Like, I remember my dad tricked me into thinking like this other eight year old wanted to beat the shit yeah, across yeah. the street. There you go. Good old fashioned <laughs> trauma. <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> Make for a good story, I guess. Also, I don't know if your girls would. They'd be like, Dad, you should just forgive them. 
Your girls are so sweet. That's I feel their mother. Like. That's okay. Their mother. Okay. That's, that's that's all Laura. <laughs> uh, any any good trait that they have, I give it credit to their mom oh, because I was such a rotten kid. <laughs> I was such a rotten yeah. kid. Those girls are so sweet in comparison oh, to who man. I was as a kid. Oh. Um, she's doing good then. <laughs> she's doing great, and I I I give her credit where credits due. Like yeah. having a therapist as a mom is got yeah, yeah. it. Well, moms are everything, man. Well, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. a mom's boy. Too, I'm so right there with you. Yeah. 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 Moms. Um, but yeah, that's that is the terrifying thing about being a parent. It's like, just like I hope I don't. I, just don't, I hope I don't know yeah. what I'm gonna traumatize my kid with. Yeah. But I'm sure I'm. I, I've caused trauma to my girls, yeah. but it was very not like intentional. Yeah. <laughs> so, when I want to hear because I know we've done a couple trips together, right? Sure. You know, we've yeah. been adventuring together, and and sometimes you let me plan the adventures because I just love doing that. Yeah, I like showing people a good time, I like being host. So like, which is hard for me because I'm very much a control <laughs> I freak. I know. I know. Uh, so it has to be somebody I trust. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which we had a great time in the last one, man. It was amazing. Yeah, it yeah. was amazing. And um, so the reason I brought that up is because, right, like those adventures and just people in general, right, you go outside, those feelings you get, right, that's a big part of what we do with Adventure for All. So, like, what does the outdoors mean to you, like, you know, when you go on these trips? Dude, it, so, like, I remember, like, specifically to our trip, and then I did a trip up to the mountains in, in summer, and, the, and I had the same moment. Um but specifically on our trip, I remember it was uh, it was February. Yeah. We were up in up in upstate New York yeah. near Lake Placid, and we were hiking to this peak. Yeah, snowshoeing. Yeah, yeah snowshoeing. Yeah, yeah. I never I'd never even seen snow before, let alone like walked yeah. through it and all of that. And um, it was the four of us, you know, my wife and I, and you and Danny, and we were just walking. I just remember looking around, and I'm just like. I don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to leave this moment. Yeah. And I had a similar experience um, in, in North Carolina this summer. Um, I was just, I was paddle boarding mm -hmm. out in the lake. No one else with me. I was just by myself. Mm -hmm. And I just laid down and I just looked around and I'm just like, I, I like, I've been so intentional about practicing mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And because for me, I'm, always looking to the next thing yep. like what's next on yep. the dock what's next on the dock yep. what are we doing next what are mm -hmm. we gonna do so i'm not enjoying what's what i'm doing right now yeah um and like in those moments of like reflection and yeah. just like understand like i fucking love the outdoors yeah. like i love it um and it, those realizations in those last two trips were yeah. just like i need to be outside more like yeah. i need to do outside stuff because i do absolutely yeah. love it i love pushing myself mm -hmm. i love being outside i love sweating in when yeah. you're not in like yeah, nice clothes yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't think anybody likes sweating when they're in nice clothes but um <laughs> i just like no. if i'm prepared for it like yeah. i'm ready to go on an adventure to yeah. like push myself yeah um, and have those moments like and, you said but the moments like, are what's like so beautiful still. it's it's something that it's like it feels so right yeah yeah. It doesn't feel wrong. Yeah. Right? Like sitting on my phone for an hour yeah. on the couch feels yeah. wrong. Yeah. It doesn't just like Yeah. But being out there exploring, like, you're just like And I had is... no idea where we were going. Yeah. I was just like, I'm trusting that my friend knows where he's going because <laughs> yeah. we're high And luckily I did because I never because I've never done that trail in snow either. So well, I was like this is the first time I'm hearing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never done it in snow. I've done it multiple times in the summer and fall, but I was like, there were moments I was like I think we're on the right path but i just like played it cool yeah we're this way guys yeah, yeah and then all of a sudden we just walk off the side of a cliff <laughs> <laughs> but i was like well the reason i had, i'm glad to you know you had that expression of like what the outdoors does because you know when you're when you have to go back home you kind of go through this like almost it's like depressive state oh, yeah, like, you're super like, sad. like this is so sad and like yeah. Because we experience that with our with our kids, you yeah. know, because they usually have never had these moments. And you notice on the trip when they're having those moments, like mm -hmm. you said, you can see it from afar. They're having one of those moments where they're just staring off and you know they're they're in it. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times they get it when we take them on that hike where they go to the peak. Mm -hmm. You'll see them sitting on a rock after we've been through the high of, yeah, high five. This is amazing. You guys made it, you know, and then 15 minutes will pass. And, you know, we always hike with hot coffee because we're, we're there for sunrise and we're pouring the parents coffee. But all of a sudden you'll. After 10 minutes, you'll look over and you'll see the kids are all sitting on rocks and they're just staring. Mm. And you can tell they're having that moment. Yeah. You know, that moment of just like, just feeling whatever they want to feel just yeah. in that moment. And you know that that's the moment they're going to remember, like, more than anything. And so, like, like this Sunday, we're having a, we had to learn to have a post-adventure protocol. 
because last year we didn't have that. Mm. And these kids and these families went through like a depressive state because like they were just so sad yeah. that it was over. It was such a high to yeah. like come back to normal life. It's, and so yeah. like this year, like we have, so Sunday we're doing a hiking and biking workshop with that same crew. And then right. we're taking the families plus the kids to a big breakfast. Nice. You know, there's 20 of us. And so again, it's just showing them. And that, that's why I'm really excited about it. Cause I want to show them too, that like that moment and that whole program isn't over. Mm. Like you guys can do this every other week you yeah. guys can go here you guys can bike together as friends like you guys are a community now you're family now and so it's going to be a beautiful this sunday to yeah. see them like all back again and like yeah we're back you yeah. know and because now like you know once you've had that bond uh, with those it's people such a bonding yeah, experience they're just, to do like, stuff like that yeah, together. they're, they're like, all best friends now well any trip like i feel like i felt closer to you after our trip yeah. like any trip that we've taken i'm just like i i you build a lot of memories with somebody yeah. and then especially like the trip we did to where it was just like I don't, I mean, we watched like one documentary yeah. on like on TV, but yeah. like other than that, we were just outside adventuring. Yeah. Like, <laughs> building snowmen. <laughs> that was the first. So, like, <laughs> you were so hyped that you got to pop my snow cherry. I know. <laughs> so, oh, I was, dude. So, I was like, dude, you just yeah. like took it on. But <laughs> the first thing we did was we built snow, like yeah. s- snowmen. I was like, dude, we're going to be seven years old today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, like, my one of my favorite memories from that trip is. Um, you know, we, we do our workouts in the morning yeah. and then, uh, you had a hot tub yep. outside in the freezing cold yeah. with snow covered everything. Yeah. We and we're like, snow plunge yeah. And then so, we, so we were like, we're going to do a hot, cl- cold plunge. Yeah. And so we'd go into the, just so like the jacuzzi was piping hot for oh, like yeah. boiling oh, yeah. water. So and so we'd jump out of there and jump in the snow yeah. and just like try to count. Oh, like, I think we were trying yeah. to do 30 seconds. Yeah, in the whatever. Snow, just like b- burying ourselves. And it like burns yeah. more because no, it's, it's like wild. so cold. Oh, um, but like those, like those memories is just, yeah. I, I'll never forget them. Yeah. Like, they're just, I want to go back now. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, all right, we're going. <laughs> but, just, like you said, it revives the kid in you. I tell people, yeah. like, don't let the kid in you die. Yeah. Man. And if it does, like, find a way to revive it. Because, yeah. man, like, like, that part of you just makes everything just so much more vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the things Laura tells me. She's like, you just, you bring out the silly in me. Yeah. She's like, my wife's like, she's she's such a stoic, logical yeah. person. Like, yeah. I, I always joke, like, I'm I'm the emotional one in the relationship. <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't mean this in a very sexist way at all, so please don't, like, get mad at me but i always joke i'm the woman in the relationship i'm much more like emotionally driven and that kind of stuff um and she's just so much more stoic but she appreciates that in me to where she's like you bring out silliness in me and like that's that's good it is good um so one of the last questions yeah um and i I really uh when you were saying you write poetry i'd really like you to read one if you're cool Uh, with that yeah yeah i'd have to grab my phone but oh uh, okay all right well i mean i mean it's right right there but (laughs) okay all right perfect so we can do that at the end but um this is a question i like to ask like any young young entrepreneur like where where do you see your life to where you're like this is what i wanted like i've built the thing that i want to build like what is your idea deal like when you're 50 years old Mm -hmm. what does it look like what does your ideal life look like Mm. this is a hard question only because like (laughs) like you were saying one of your biggest you know strengths but weaknesses is i'm constantly thinking ahead yeah yeah so one of my biggest practices in life has been to not think like that (laughs) no but like who (laughs) you are like who you are in this moment because obviously things happen your goals change like if you would have told me eight years ago that i was going to own a clothing company and it would become my biggest passion I would have told you you were fucking yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. I want to do music. That's it. Yeah. But, like, no limitations, just where I. What is to chase yeah. in 2022 when yep. you're 50 years old? What does your ideal life look like? My my ideal life still looks like me exploring the world. Okay. Um, I never want to stop exploring the world. I feel like every mountain I hike, every trail I bike, every country I visit, I learn something and it fucking humbles me every time in the most beautiful way. So whether I'm 40, 50, 60, 70, or I'm 89 and I'm hiking Everest because that's where I want to die or something, like whatever it is, I want to be exploring the world. Like no matter where I'm at in life, I don't want to stop exploring. Because like I said, I just feel like seeing new places and doing new things and trying new things is like what makes me feel alive. Yeah. So I just, I just want to keep the adrenaline in my life. Yeah. So that's where I want to be. I feel like if as long as I'm doing that and I'm still exploring, I will be happy in whatever I'm doing in life. Mm-hmm. No matter 
my friends or the work. I feel like as long as I'm fulfilling that, I'll be happy. I'll be very fulfilled. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, let's hear one of those po- uh, right. poems. Yeah, go go grab your phone real quick. Oh, oh thanks, man. Producer See, Kyle. He's, he's, God. See, he's nice. He's on you, it. You make him out to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. Oh, man. I didn't think I'd be doing this. All right, so. As long as you're comfortable with it. Absolute, I just, yeah, I, absolutely. I've I, read some of your poetry. I, I think it's to, beautiful. Yeah, I used to not You know, want to share it. And then, you know, so let's see. Pick I'm a gonna, good one. Yeah, I know. I also don't bring I, don't bring trash onto this podcast. <laughs> all right, I want it to be good. Oh man! All right, let's see here. All right, I'm gonna read two. That's fine. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> so this one. Do you want to set it up at all? What do you mean? This poem, like where where it came from, or anything like that. Or you just want to riff? No, the reason why, so with my poems, I don't like to really say what they mean. Okay, go for it. Um, at least not before. All right. Because I want people to hear this. All right. And so once I read this, if you want, maybe pause it and say, all right, what did I get out of that? Yeah. And then, no, I'll, and then I'll explain what I was feeling or whenever I wrote it. Okay. Um, so this one I call Canvas. <clears throat> the words that have brushed my lips can't be taken back. Vibrant colors are being added daily, but the harsh black strokes of my wrongful actions peek through reminding me how far I've come. The brush sinks into the water, creating a cloud of moments that didn't make their way to paper. I step back only to notice the white space extends beyond what my eyes can see. Feeling anxious, yet motivated to pick up to pick my brush back up, the little voice in my head whispers, one day at a time, tomorrow is another masterpiece. I love that, man. That's really good. So I read this one, because of what I just said, where I struggle not to look ahead. Right. Um, you know, this reminds me of, hey, man, like, you, you're you not going to accomplish everything today. And today's also about making moments, you know. And um, and you're not going to be able to do everything that you set out to do every single day. And that's that's where I say, you know, the, the water creates a cloud of moments that didn't make their way to paper. It's like, well, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't make its way to the paper today. Or, and hey, it may never make its way to that paper because every moment in life we have a decision – and whatever decision we make, the other ones weren't made. Mm-hmm. You know, and those are moments that were lost, you could say, because mm-hmm. they define the rest of our path of our life. But accepting that every choice we make is accepting those choices and just moving forward and understanding that, like, that moment's gone. It's okay. Yeah. Move forward. Um, it's so, yeah. beautiful, man. Thanks, I love man. it. Um, and then this one I'm going to share just because um, I just wrote it <clears throat> uh, last weekend. Okay. So it's kind of like... My most recent one. High off the adventure and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And Let's um go. you know, whenever I go on these kind of you know, without <laughs> whenever I go on these trips kind of by myself or with one other person, they're usually very healing. Or I kind of go there to kind of just really figure things out and just, you know, grow. So this one's called I Try. Okay. <clears throat> I try. I fuck up, but I want to learn from it. I break, but I search for healing. I hurt, but I look to love. I fear, but I walk into the darkness. I'm not perfect, but I run the path towards it, tripping, falling, and bleeding. Never will I stop trying to grow. I try. Yeah. Yeah. That's good shit, man. That's that's like you in a nutshell right there. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's kind of why yeah. I, I liked it. It was just like, you know, I tell you all the time, it's like, man, like, you're going to break. You're going to fuck up. You're going to hurt. You're going to be scared. But, man, as long as you're trying, mm. You know, life's about trying. Totally it. It's not about being right. It's not about anything. It's just if you're trying in life, you're gonna have a pretty good life. Yeah. Just just yeah. try, man. Just yeah. apply yourself. Well, and that's where it's like it's not <clears throat> trying is not without uh, pain. Yeah. Um. But it, man, it can it can lead to a really happy life. Yeah. Um. But dude, I. I really appreciate this yeah, like man. i um i'm always very humbled any time somebody says yes to come on yeah. um i know how busy you are <laughs> but i really i really appreciate you doing this and i love you man i love you too man Proud you know those those humbles like i hope you know people that sit across from you feel that same way man like to be on your podcast and to be somebody that you you want to sit here and talk with and and just get deeper with and, and share with your viewers man I, I really appreciate it and i and I'm just happy to be here, man. That's that's good. And I, I think, you know, obviously anybody that's been a long time listener of ONS seen your beautiful face all over, but <laughs> yeah. they haven't gotten to know who you are and yeah. uh, you're even more beautiful on the inside, dude. Thanks, so, Love I you, appreciate it. Love appreciate you too, you. man.